Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to paint a really cute little painting here called Merry Christmas, dear. So it is still Christmas in July, so we're doing some fun stuff. And this is done with a new series of paint kits that we're doing with really fun traceables and graphite transfer paper. So we make it super, super easy. So I have um, all this line art ready to go. And this comes with your kit, so it's very fun and easy. And then we've also got our brushes nearby. And then you can have paper towels or a rag. And then I've got some water all ready to go. And then lots and lots of paint. So of course your kit comes with this beauty. All right, so again, everything that you need. All right, so I've got everything done with a Sharpie. Now let me talk about how you can go ahead and get started with yours. You can just have the graphite tracing, which looks a lot like a pencil tracing. So if you like that, you can keep it really light and work with that. Um, or you can, this is an optional thing, I went ahead and used a Sharpie to reinforce all my lines, which you're certainly more than welcome to do. Um, some people don't prefer that as a style though, so that's, that's just kind of up to you as the user. You can you know, have these soft lines or you can reinforce with the Sharpie line. I also really prefer the Sharpie when I teach so that you as the audience can see it very clearly. So this is what we'll be painting into. So I've already traced this out, got it all ready to go. Very beginner friendly, that's my specialty. I love to teach beginners how to paint. So I give you all of our little tricks and wonderful tools to make that happen. Okay, so we're gonna put this back here on my lovely easel. And then we're going to start with my mama brush. So by the way, this is my little family of brushes. I've got mama, hi Kathy. <laughs> I've got mama, little buddy, and then little bit. All right, so I'm going to start with my mama brush. And then I'm going to mix up some beautiful turquoise. Okay, so I'm going to take a nice big dollop of the white, and then a nice big dollop of the blue, and then a nice big dollop of cadmium green. And then I'll push this over here to the side, mix all this up all together. So this will give me a really pretty turquoise. I'm going to make a turquoise sky today. So again, big dollop of white, big dollop of blue, and then a little bit of that green. So there's my beautiful color. And I've got it flat on the brush there. Hi, Jamie. Me too, I love turquoise too. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start to paint this in. Now guess what? I've got my lettering done with my Sharpie first. It will bleed through the paint, that's intentional. So I'm going to go ahead and just sweep through here. I did that on purpose. That way it just makes it a lot easier for me. So I'm gonna sweep through in a nice horizontal stroke. Now as I go, I wanna add little tiny touches of white in my sky. So I'll take that same brush and just barely kind of touch into the white right there on the corner. And then I'll sweep that through so it adds a nice little highlight. And the good news is I can actually sweep through a lot of this detail. So I actually want that Sharpie to bleed right through the paint. That is definitely intentional. Just makes it a lot easier on me. And there's a couple of options for you at home who are doing this. You can, if you want to just sweep through your entire canvas, turquoise first, just like solid blocks of color, you certainly can do that. Then you can take your line art with your graphite paper and you can trace it on over the top too. So that also really works as well, either way that you're comfortable with. Actually, I guess I don't have to avoid those. I will go ahead and avoid my trees just so I have a reference of where those are. But honestly, you don't really have to. It's not that big of a deal, especially if it just all bleeds through here. There's my precious puppy dog coming in the door. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. <laughs> Hello to you in West Virginia. It is actually really beautiful here today. Yes. 
I'm very glad about that. Oops, there I go through one tree. Oh well, it doesn't matter. All right, so still sweeping on turquoise. Hi, Donna. Uh, so I've got my turquoise that I mixed up, and again, revisiting the mix on that. That is equal parts blue, green, and white. That makes a beautiful turquoise. Then I'll sweep this on in a horizontal stroke. And just push this all into my background. And I'll go all the way until I get to about, well, where the ground is. So that makes that easy. And then as I push this through in a horizontal stroke, I also like to make sure I add just a tiny amount of white. So I'll keep that going through there too. Bit of, a little bit of blue in there. And you know what? A little bit in here too. And I can actually be pretty sloppy around that tree because I'm just going to come in with green over the top anyway. So it will not matter at all. And I need to use a, I'm gonna go ahead and sweep in with a little bit of a smaller brush in here. All right, a lot of our background done, so see how easy that is? Very fun and easy. I have a little bit more in here to do, but I do need a smaller brush, so I'm going to go ahead and come in with Little Buddy. All right, so here's a Little Buddy brush, and I'm gonna push into a little bit of that turquoise again. And then I'll get into these really small little areas right into here. And a really tiny area right in there. So I need my, I need a little bit brush, so I'm going to take a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do a little twist here into the paint. And I've got just a teeny amount of sky. And if I overcoat just a little bit, that's okay. I can touch that back up with more black here in a minute. And some of this will actually be gray and a little bits of white. They'll come in for snow here in a moment. All right. So beautiful. We have all of our gorgeous sky done. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix up a really pretty light, light heather gray color. So this will be our lovely snow. So I'm going to use my mama brush again. And remember when you're not using your brushes, always make sure you just go ahead and let them rest in the water until you get a chance to clean those off. So it's much safer to do that because otherwise acrylic paint sets up and dries super fast and you'll create lots of really expensive sticks for yourself. So let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and let them sit in the water while you're waiting. All right, so we've got a nice little dollop of white over here, and then I just wanna to barely touch into the black. So a little touch of that black, super tiny. I'm gonna mix that into my white. I just want a hint of gray over here. So there's my little hint of gray, so a little touch of black in my white paint. And then I'll go ahead and sweep this into my snow. So this is all snow in here. So as much as I can, I try to use the bigger brush to work into this area. I can tell I'm gonna have to switch over to my little buddy brush though pretty quick. Yep. Now I'm gonna go in for a little bit of just pure white right over the top. Now 
Now, while this is still wet, let me show you something really fun. So I'll take the brush and I'll go ahead and just stick the line edge right into that black. It's real small. See a little tiny amount of black right there? And then see the wet paint, the white wet paint is still there. So you'll get a nice soft blend into that. So you can just barely touch into your black. And then I'll go ahead and follow this line. And see, that's a really nice blend. But the key is to make sure that the white is still wet and then you will get that soft blend in there. All right, super fun. Okay, now I must get a smaller brush because this is very tiny in here. So I'm going to use my little bit here and I'm going to go ahead and do a little touch into that light, light, light gray that we mixed up. So that's a big dollop of white, little tiny touch of the black. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint in and around these little shapes here. So I'm coming in around my little present. Again, this is a little bit, lots of white, tiny amount of black. I just hold it like a pencil that helps me do my cutting work around these little shapes. And see in here, I've got snow until about right in through there. So I'll fill that in. A little bit of snow right in through here. And then I'll go ahead and just barely touch into that black just a little bit. My brush still has a lot of white on it. A little touch of black right there on the end. And I'll go ahead and do that brown line through there. Get a little touch of that black. And we'll rework this one again since we had to do a little bit more painting into that surface area. All right, very lovely. I've got one more little area of light snow I need to just barely place into some small detail areas. So right in here, this is still more snow. So I wanna go ahead and work that in just a little bit. Okay, I wasn't quite sure where my sky was going in, but right there I'm discovering, okay, I need to make an adjustment to help that match up. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of touch-up work on my black deer. So I worked in advance in the beginning and did a little bit of some fresh black. Let's see. So this is Mars black. I'm gonna go ahead and get some fresh black here on my plate. about y'all and you're part of the country but man we have lots of fly friends <laughs> and I don't mean that as a compliment to them they are literally just flies that are I think they're our friends <laughs> they, just, they come to every picnic we have <laughs> they just will not leave me alone oh my goodness they're everywhere this year all right, so I'm going to do a little bit of touch up with the black. Yay. Okay, sweet. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and work in my beautiful little trees here. So I want, we're working back into a, a fairly large area to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to my mama brush. And then I will start with some really pretty, I've got some viridian over here to the side. Let me give you a visual on that. All right, so beautiful viridian. And then we also want some cadmium green. I better get some more of this. So cadmium green is just a really basic green. Let's 
So I'm going to do a little bit of that. And then just for some fun highlights to blend into, I've also got a really pretty, this is a, a lighter, it's like a yellow green. So we got a yellow green, cadmium green, and a little bit of that Viridian. So I'll mix those two together, or three rather. Yay, all right, so it's becoming very beautiful. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this into this shape here. The other thing that you can add into green too, I haven't done it yet, but white can sometimes also really help because it definitely helps it cover better. So greens can sometimes be very translucent. So having just a tiny little touch of white in there really helps. We definitely want more of a pine green effect in this though, so I want to keep it a little bit darker. And that viridian that I touched into, that was from, I was painting earlier and it had set up and dried, so I need, I need some fresh viridian on here. Ah, oh, that is so much better. That's the thing, you have to cover your acrylic paint. It will set up and dry, sometimes five to 15 minutes, so. Gotta be careful with that. All right, so that is very soft, lovely viridian that I can touch into, softly blends in, and brings in some darker, richer tones to the green, which is definitely what I want for my, uh, more of like a, a pine tree look. Yeah, that's looking really awesome. So at first I wanna let the line edge of the brush really work for me, so I'm definitely holding the brush just like you'd hold a pencil, so you can let that line edge work in your favor, it just makes it a lot easier. And then here in a moment, then I will switch over to just more of that flat side of the brush and just work in with little cross strokes back and forth. I'll take it into each little corner here. Work it back into the center. We're also gonna learn how to make little, uh, little bits of snow on the ends too in a minute. So that'll be fun. Actually, it may be longer than a minute before I get to that. <laughs> but you know, in this class, I will definitely teach you that. But it's gonna be a little bit later. All right, so we've got lots of big sections here of this green. And then here in a minute, I'm definitely gonna to have to switch over to a smaller brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and work in as much as I can with the bigger brush. So the little ends of the tree, it kind of feels like you make like little letter V's. And just a flat edge all the way across here. A little soft curve to that. And then I'll just kind of feather this out here in the center with again those little bitty cross strokes. Lay the handle more over to the side. Let's get a little bit more of that happening here too. So I wanna feather this back out. Little bits of that cross stroke just happening back and forth. All right, and then smaller brush. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off the excess to save my paint a little bit. Put that into the water. And now I need my little buddy brush here. And I'm just gonna push into that same mix that we just did, which was our Viridian and our Cadmium Green. A little bit of that bright yellow green. And then a little touch of white too, if you wanna add a little bit of that in there too. And 
and then just a little touch there. So as I get right next to the edge, I wanna go ahead and place that flat line of the brush right up next to the edge. And then I'll just very lightly kind of pull away and then I wanna feather that back out. So I get a little bit of a light blend into that open area space. And then here I'll use the line edge of the brush to do my cut-in work. Now at first I'm seeing this very dramatic line, brush line that comes in around his shape. So I will definitely want to feather that back out into the open space so that that's not so noticeable. So once I've got that cut and work done, then I'll pick up another little load of paint on my brush, take that flat line just of the brush right up next to that edge, place it as close as I can to the shape where I just did my cut in and then I'll feather it out with little tiny X's. Just kind of help softly blend that in. And from here, I'll come in on the other side. And if you start to notice that maybe a position is becoming a little bit of a struggle because of your angle, don't be afraid to turn the canvas as necessary like this. So now all of a sudden, I was kind of having to do this business and it was feeling really awkward. So don't struggle with it. You can absolutely just turn your canvas to another position and then it gives you more free range of space to move your arm about. And then you can just continue on with those little tiny crisscross patterns to go ahead and blend all these brush strokes in. So I'll taper this back in as well much easier to reach with this angle. And then same thing here on this side. Sometimes you just have to keep turning it until you're happy with it too. I wanna make sure y'all can see it. Sometimes, there, I wanna make sure I'm not in the way. All right. So lightly feather into those little sections. Little crisscross action. Again, cadmium green, viridian green. Very lovely for those pine tree colors. And now on this one, I'm seeing some additional soft blending that I want to work back in. So this time I'm pushing into Viridian Cadmium Green using my little buddy brush. And I'm going to do like a, another just second coat here to help reinforce that color a little bit and do another little soft blend just back and forth to work that in. Also kind of working it in the same way that the position of the branches flow. So we'll have a little bit of that motion with the brush stroke working for us. Kind of reminds me of how I used to have to do my hair when I was a young girl. Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> Does that remind you of Farrah? <laughs> I don't know. You'll know you're old enough to get that. <laughs> you understand 
If you're too young, don't worry about it. But this is, man, I had a fair faucet hairstyle. So I don't know if anybody else can join me in that appreciation of <laughs> that wonderful hairstyle. A lot of us had it. All right, so beautiful trees, beautiful fair faucet trees. That's, yes they are. Okay, so now let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and do my beautiful little present down here. So what do we want to make our present? What color, let's see. Be classic or you can be a little bit adventurous. Let's see, let's do a little bit of adventure here. I'm gonna do some magenta. And I think I've got some of my plate. And a little bit of white for some hot pink. If I had a little bit of that coral to it, or I'm sorry, not coral, orange. All right, so I picked up a little bit of orange and then a little bit of that magenta. And there's a little bit of white in there too. Uh, so again, that is magenta and then See if I can find an orange real quick to look at. No. Nope. Oh, here we go. Orange and then white. So I mixed all of that together and then I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, my brush was a little bit clumpy with the mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of that excess paint, get, make it a little bit smaller, and then I will work it into this little shape here. So again, this is my little present. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter pink now. So I'm adding more white. And then I'll do this here in the top section. And present color is so optional. I would just do your favorite color even. You could just really be very playful for that and do whatever you want. Sometimes I'm just inspired by what's already on my plate. <laughs> so I just kind of looked down and went, oh, that looks pretty. Um, I'm also seeing some really pretty cadmium yellow here. So I'm gonna mix in with that. A little bit of white to brighten it up. And then I will go ahead and position this into the ribbon. Still using my little buddy brush, by the way. Nice fit in here. And then one more, one more line. Awesome. Okay. I have, I've got some real cute little, I don't know if they were forest disco balls or what, but we're gonna make something really fun with those. Okay, uh, let's see here. What color? I want, I know in my original one, these were like a light gray, and I guess I could do that again. Or I could go really bright, and I'm thinking about going really bright again. Let's make, I don't know, I've never seen gold disco balls, but in my universe, I'd like to have them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some more cadmium yellow. So I've got that really pretty bright color here and I'll add a little bit of white to brighten that up.
And I'm gonna go ahead and paint into this shape here. So I'll come around that circle first. And then I need to feather it out using the flat side of the brush. So then I'll come back over the top. And let's do one more. And we'll be decorating those later, but for right now, we're just gonna let that set up and dry a little bit. Okay, so now I've got, I don't want to forget about my little tree trunks. Actually, let me go ahead and do my tree trunks now. I just don't want to miss those later. They look a little odd down there. I know what they are, but they probably are not making much sense to those tuning in at this point. So I'll come in with my little buddy brush, little touch of the black, and just do a quick little line edge. Just go ahead and fill that in. I want to make sure and knock that out. All right, wonderful. Now I'm not going to do too much more black because I, I want to keep this really light. I still have a lot of the flag colors to work in. And if I did all my black right now, then all my light brights would blend into the black and it would make them very dull and gray. So I'm gonna keep everything really bright. So now I've got flag colors. I've got these like little pinafore flags running through the background. So I wanna make sure I've got really pretty bright colors to work into that mix. So I'm going to do some, probably a mix of this bright cadmium yellow and white, a little bit of pink, and then also I've got this really gorgeous light green that I'll add some white to. That'd be really pretty as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more white here to this red. And I may have to switch to, we'll see. This brush might be just right, or I may have to switch over to my little bit brush, but we'll see how this goes. Because what I'm hoping is that I can just use the line edge of the brush just to go down like that and like a V shape. It could really help simplify it. Yep, that works. Anytime you can allow the line edge of a brush to help you out with a straight line, I think it really helps. So this feels like I'm just making a letter V to begin with, and then I just fill that in. Do another little V up here. I'm trying to just while I have my brush loaded up with this color, I'm going to try to go ahead and knock out all those little pink flags that I can see. So I'm just skipping about every third one. I'll go ahead and make it pink. So that works really well. All right, it's getting a little bit. So here's what's happening. The brush is filling up with some paint on the sides and it's interrupting my line work. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out a little bit here, dry off, and then let's reload a little bit. Helps to start fresh every now and again. Ah, it's better now. All right, so here we go. Little lines for RVs and then fill in.
All right, very awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and come in with a different color. So still using my little buddy brush, and then we will come in with, uh, let's do our cadmium yellow. All right, so I've got my cadmium yellow, a little bit of white. And this will be easy because I'll just position this one by every pink existing flag that I have. So you won't even have to think about it. And I am adding a little bit of white to this to help brighten it up. Also helps it show up better over that turquoise. So again, it's your little V to begin with and then turn the brush over to the side. Fill that in. This is a very bright Christmas. <laughs> I don't know if anybody out there has this color scheme for Christmas with hot pinks and bright yellows. I did see a lot of this last season. There was a lot of that really bright color combination for Christmas. Lots of hot pinks and teals, hot pink, turquoise, bright yellows. You know, and then if I had a flag over here, it would, the pink one would fall behind the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this. And with my cadmium yellow, that'll help match my pattern. Beautiful. Okay, so now I need to come in with my... Did I miss it? No! <laughs> I'm still going. I have a lot more to go. And by the way, if you ever come in late, you can always come back and watch the whole thing from the beginning. And hello, Clay, and hello, Rhonda. Welcome, welcome. We're painting a sweet little deer in the forest, having a bright, bright Christmas. It's Christmas in July. All right, so now we're gonna push into a little bit of this bright, bright green, very pretty. Might do a little bit of white with that to help lighten it up, make sure it's very contrasting. It shows up very nicely over our turquoise sky. Still using my little buddy brush. Hi, Sherry. Welcome, welcome. And there's a lot of other people out there. I can't see everybody, but hello, everybody. Welcome. All right, so I start again with that little, it's like letter V, and then I just go ahead and fill in. So we're just doing our little flags here in the background. Okay, very nice. I have a little bit of an accent I want to do here. I'll do that with some white over the top. I'm going to use my little bit brush. All right, and a little twist here into the white paint. 
So I'm twisting it between my fingertips. That'll rotate it into the paint, load it up, but also give me a nice fine point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a soft little curve here. There's a little bit of reflective light here. And our little Christmas balls hanging from the heavens of our forest. <laughs> oh, thank you, me too. Makes me <sighs> calm down. <laughs> most days <laughs> all right uh, and I want little white accents here on my little gift wrap so I'll do just little tiny strokes of white just right here on the top And then I want to come back in over the snow and just do little touches of white here too. Just pure white right over the top. Okay. Now I need to do little bits of snow on my trees. So this is a really fun little technique here and I'm going to be using my Little buddy brush, it's got a little flat top, and I'll just push right down into the white paint. So it kind of looks like that. Then I do a little tapping effect just directly on my canvas. And I'll do it right where the snow would fall. So I just kind of tap, tap, tap. And I'll do this on all of these little endings here. So this is a really fun, easy technique. Also helps relieve a little bit of stress. You get a little bit of that tapping motion out. So tap it out into those little tiny corners. And we'll just do this on all of them. And some of this little tapping motion, I will work back into the center of the tree as well. But we're going to get those outer edges done first. So again, this is my little buddy brush, little fat, uh, flat brush. Hi, Larry. And then I just dip right into the white, and then I just kind of tap it all the way across. Now, some of these I'm gonna take a little bit into the center. So it almost looks like I kind of come up for a little, just a little upward motion, almost like making a little mountain top and then coming back down, or like a little triangular shape. So I'll take that up to my center a little bit and then bring it back down to the other side. So I'll do a little bit of that soft blending back and forth. But I'm not nearly as heavy handed in the center as I was on the outer parts of the tree. The other thing that you can do too is as you're working in this white that comes across, hey, thank you. <laughs> you can also kind of push back into a little bit of green to softly blend it in. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got my brush loaded up with white, but this time I'll come in with a little bit of that cadmium touch into it and I can rework my blend kind of back into that snow and just sort of tap into it. 
especially right in the center of the tree. Same pattern, same motion. Kind of go back into the white. Again, just little tapping motions all the way across. Wonderful. Okay, so it's looking like we've just had a beautiful, fresh snow. I'm going to take my same brush, little buddy, come back in. I've, I've rinsed it off a little bit, dried it off. I'm going to go ahead and go in with some fresh white this time. Reload a little bit. And then we'll begin our tapping process again on the other side. So while I'm doing Christmas in July, my husband is out making surfboards. So crazy. <laughs> he has a custom order right now, so it's super exciting. We have a married couple that apparently their football teams were rivals. And so He's making both football teams for them, side by side. They are serious college football fans. And we sure hope college football happens. <laughs> we're we're kind of nervous about that here. So I don't know if there's any other football fans out there, but we don't really pay attention pay too much attention to NFL, but we're very into college football, so something we look forward to in the fall, but we don't know if it's going to happen. All right, we're still tapping, tapping a little bit of white all the way across, making that little bit of snow fall, fall across our little tree here. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit closer to this deer. Cause it almost looked like it had a tiny little, whoops, my necklace went right in my paint. That happens a lot. Okay. All right, beautiful. Okay, so now we can start working in some of our dark lines that will help define things and bring it out to the front. So I still wanna use my handy little buddy brush, but I wanna come in with some darker black paint. So I'm rinsing it off, drying it off. And now let's go ahead and come in with some black. All right, I wanna make sure that I do not have any excess water in my brush, especially when you're painting a vertical place because you don't want water runs. If you do add some water to your brush to make some like a finer point or a different technique on your canvas, just make sure that you always position your canvas flat. And then that way you can safely use and experiment with a little bit more water with the process. All right, so here we go. We have little buddy and a little bit of that black paint. I'm gonna go ahead and just push back and forth here into that. I want that nice, thin line edge. So I will be really reinforcing my flags now. Now they have a line, you can really see that line pop out where they are hanging from. So 
So I'll take those all the way across. And then this one. I ran out of paint already. Let's do that one again. All right, now we can do the fun little outline around all those tiny little flags. Now that's optional. You can leave this part raw if you want to, or you can add this little line. I think it kind of helps make each one really pop out. And if you use your little buddy brush, it can certainly make the process a lot easier. What you do want to make sure of is that your line edge on the edge is very thin so you're going to make sure that your brush doesn't get too filled with paint because it'll make those bristles spread out and then you will not have a thin line anymore so you do need to make sure and apply firm pressure back and forth nice thin line and then that helps a lot See, this would actually take forever if you were trying to do this with a liner, small brush, a little bit brush. But because you've got this line doing the work for you, it's just one stroke. So it does really make it a lot easier. So I've got some lines coming down there as well. So definitely want to use my line brush from Little Buddy to help me make that stroke all the way down. And then I've got more detail here on my packaging to firm up. So it's looking a little bit raw and unfinished. So then I'll come back in with that heavier thin line of the black reinforce that packaging. Okay, now I've got to switch over to my little, little bit. All right, so I need, I want a really tiny, tiny one. Hmm, I just saw one. That works. Okay, so one that goes into a really fine point here. So I'm doing a quick little twist here into that black paint, getting a nice fine point. And then this will help me do these really tiny little details. I've got that little curve up there I need to do. So with these little cute, I call my little golden disco balls in the forest. Do a little outline around those. Now I'm also using my little pinky to help my hands stabilize. So that's a fun little trick for you. So it kind of acts like a little training wheel.
And then we have our lettering. So I've got all this done to begin with, and it is definitely showing through my paint, so it makes it super, super easy to do. And then what I really recommend here, and you can always use your paint. I've got paint all over me. You just wanna make sure you do have a, a tiny little bit, of course our kit comes with that, because you wanna be able to rotate it into a nice fine point. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and reload. I wanna make sure I've got some fresh. You can also use a Sharpie for this too. Makes it really easy. And then our graphite paper and our guide has all of the words that you need. And we're starting to create, let me show you what we're also doing. This is very fun. So in addition to the words that are already on your design, we're also including this too, so that you can have options. And so you can use the graphite paper to put in a different phrase too, because these are super popular. So you can add those in as well. All right, so I'm gonna take my little bit brush. I'm doing a quick little twist here into the black paint. So I twist it between my fingertips, get it into a really nice fine point, And then I can go ahead and follow along over the top. Definitely using my pinky to help stabilize my hand. And again, if a Sharpie is much more um, desirable for you, absolutely go for it with a Sharpie because a lot of people use Sharpies. I even use Sharpies sometimes, so. Now on the loops, make sure you go around the loop and not inside the loop. Because sometimes you can run the risk of closing off your loop. So for example, the E has that loop in it. You wanna make sure and go around it so that you maintain the shape of it. So in just a minute, this will all come to life and you will see Merry Christmas. And then if you wanna do this with your own handwriting, that is also welcomed and encouraged. I know when I see things with my kids that they do and it's their own handwriting, I really love it. Here's another loop, so you want to make sure and go on the outside. Ta -da. Merry Christmas! <laughs> so exciting! All right, let me take a little look here and see if I have maybe a few little reinforcements here with more of the black lines. But I think I've got pretty much everything done. You can always sign my masterpiece too if you do. Traditionally, it's done in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm gonna wait on mine a little bit, make sure everything's set up and dry, but I'll do my signature a little bit later on. But that's our beautiful little Merry Christmas painting. It looks fabulous. Yay! 
great job, everybody. <laughs> so um, just as a recap to show you what we do have on our website for you, we have paint, and then of course we have your brush set. We've got three brushes. We've got this lovely mama brush, and then little buddy, and then you've got a, I'm just gonna grab one, a little bit brush. All right, that all comes with it. And then the canvas. And then also we've got the graphite paper with the design, that's your transfer paper. And we've got the design all for you. And then your extra fun lettering sheet. And then I'm also doing homeschool curriculum. So homeschool for all ages, don't feel like you're too old for homeschool. So we create um, a little lesson that has themed based fun facts and a fun leadership um, like a mentoring quote for you. So it helps motivate you for the day and feel good about yourself and to move forward and take action and all that wonderful stuff. And it's always based on the theme. So for example, for this one, I would do all these fun facts on a deer and then I would pick a leadership quote that has to do with the theme of the painting. So fun stuff. And that's all for you at tipsyartist.com. So check it out and then come back and see me. And I'm pretty sure I'm painting again tomorrow at 12.30. Uh, you know me, I never know what I'm doing the next day, so we'll have to go look. Um, my whole schedule is on my website, again, tipsyartist.com, or on Facebook with events. You can look there too. But yeah, it's been fun. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday. Rest, take it easy, relax, enjoy the beautiful day, and I'll see you tomorrow at 12.30. Mwah.